G'day viewers, in this segment we'll talk about flow control. Flow control is an addition to the sliding window to deal with the problem of making sure that the receiver can handle the data that the sender is sending to it. So it's going to provide a way to slow down an overenthusiastic sender. You might wonder whether this is a, a real problem. Uh, do we need to worry about receivers not being able to handle data fast enough? Um, well, yes, actually. So the sliding window is already using a lot of pipelining to make sure we keep the network busy. But what we want to do with flow control is make sure that in doing so, even though we're keeping the network busy, as busy as we can to use it all, we're not inadvertently overloading the receiver. You might have, for instance, um, you know, a small mobile phone that's got to be a little uh, wimpier compared to some big powerful server in the cloud, which could send data at it possibly faster than the phone could receive. We'd like uh, for our protocols to be able to handle this case. Okay, so let's zoom in on the sliding window and how it works at the receiver. So this is a receiver where we have buffering for up to W buffers for out-of-order packets. Now what is going to happen in the normal case is that we'll have a sequence number. This is here, LAS, the last accent. That is going to be the highest in-order acknowledgement that's been sent. And as we receive new data, it's going to go into the buffer and then we'll pass it up to the app. The app will actually pull the data out of that buffer and we can slide our sliding window and, and go ahead. How does the app actually pull the data out of that buffer? It turns out we can relate this to sockets. It's done with the receive call. So an app needs to call receive to get the data out. Hopefully it called receive before because it was expecting data and it's just waiting to get it. But let's see what can happen under this model. Suppose that a couple of segments arrive from the network, but that the app is a little slow calling receive, so the transport can't pass them up to the application right away. Maybe that was busy for some reason. Well, two segments come in, that's these two here. Okay, so they're now full. My LAS is going to go on to here. All right, so this is now LAS. However, we can't really slide the window yet because we haven't been able to offload these two segments and pass them to the app. As soon as we've done that, we're fine and we can move the window along. But if the app's slow, we can't send them along yet. What happens? Oh, so here's a cleaned up version of that diagram. And the conclusion here is we can't send the wind, slide the window just yet. What happens now if before the app gets its act together and calls receive, more segments come in from the network? Here you can see another three segments arrived here. They went into the buffer. We had room for them. We updated LAS. Great, but we still haven't passed them to the app yet. Now, this actually means we're in a very unfortunate situation because if more new segments arrive from the other side, we don't have a place to buffer them. We'll have to throw them away. That doesn't sound very good. But luckily for us, the app now takes two segments. So that must have been these two segments here. Um, they are now shown as white because their data is being passed up to the app. So this means we can slide the window along from its left edge being here to where it is now here. And now we have another couple of buffers available for new segments coming in from the other side. Sure, that was great, just in time. But you can see we got lucky in this scenario and with a slow receiver we could easily get unlucky. What we would like to do with flow control is come up with a mechanism whereby we avoid these kinds of losses at the receiver. And we can do that by simply telling the receiver how much buffer space is available. So what we would like to tell the receiver is that, for instance, here there are three buffer spots available. That's this win, the, the flow control window, which is the number of acceptable segments or the buffer size there. We want to tell it that. Um, and not information about uh, W, which the sender knows anyhow. Um, and these, uh, this uh, win number of acceptable buffers, they're measured from LAS, from where you sent the last act, because they're the next higher segments which could be received. So all we'll do with our flow control protocol is simply send that information back, as well as the acknowledgement, we'll send this win information the flow control window. The sender will then use the lower 
size, the smaller size of the actual sliding window W and the flow control window Win. And it will pretend that the effective size of the sliding window is this size. Either of these factors could be the limiting factor. Uh, for instance, we could be limited by the amount of space in the flow control buffer at the other side. Or if we had a big fat buffer, we could be limited by the size of the sliding window that the sender is using. So either of these could be the minimum. So I'll now show you an example of flow control just to put it all together. And this is a fairly long example, so it'll take us a, a little while to go through it. It's also a TCP style example. Here we use a sequence number and an acknowledgement number for the sliding window. These are both measured in bytes, they're byte positions. The um, flow control window is carried in a variable called win. And the invariant that we need for flow control is that the byte sequence number plus the length of the number of bytes we carry in a segment needs to be less than the, the ACK number plus the flow control window. Because if it's larger than that, it may not fit in the buffer on the other side. The receiver here also has a 4 kilobyte buffer. Um, and it's a circular buffer, so the network fills it up uh, round and round and round, and the application reads from the tail end of the buffer going round. So let's see how it works. The beginning, then we have the app sending 2 kilobytes here from a sequence number of 0. So that goes into the buffer. What goes back? The ACK goes back. This ACK is for 2 kilobytes because that's now the end here of the buffer. The next place to write into it. And our window has gone down to also 2 kilobytes because that's what's left of the 4 kilobyte buffer. Okay, that's fine. Now after a little while, the app does another send of 2 kilobytes. What happens then? Well, we filled in this buffer, so you can see the right head has gone around to the beginning of the buffer again. And the act that's going to come back is going to acknowledge the end there. We got to four, we got to 4K of data has gone through. The window, however, is now zero. Uh, there's no space left in the buffer. Uh-oh. So uh, the sender at this stage, right here, Actually, from the very uh, beginning here, when it went through, it knew that it had filled up the flow, the buffer on the other side. And so it was waiting for information from the other side to say there's a little more space. It hasn't received it yet, so the sender is blocked at this stage. Sometime later here, our buffer is full. We haven't done anything with it yet. But sometime later here, the application will do a read. It will read from the beginning of the buffer through, so it will read up to here. That's 2 kilobytes. If that's the case, we now have 2 kilobytes free. So we will, oh sorry, I'll just draw over that one. We did send that back. But now after the application reads data, we're going to send another rack back. This rack will have the same um, acknowledgement number because no new data has been received from the other side. But the window will be updated to say, hey, there's now two kilobytes of free space in this buffer. When the sender receives that here, the sender knows that it can actually send some more data if it wants. It feels very happy and pleased about this. And it decides to go ahead. And now it sends another one kilobyte of data from the sequence number of 4K. That one kilobyte of data goes into the buffer there. So we, we filled it up just a little bit there. Um, and you can see we now have one kilobyte left. So if I was to go a little further here, then you would see an ACK. You can do the math here for 5K. And a win, what do you think it will be? It should be for 1K because that's all that's left. So both of those will be on here. Great. Okay. Well, that's the end of our example. And now you've seen how flow control works.